Thor The Dark World in 3D, sort of, if you want to spend a few extra bucks for post-conversion that you can't really tell. Movie review. Things have not been going well in the Nine Realms with Bifrost offline for a while. This picks up one year after the events of the Avengers, and only now are the Asgardians able to clean up in the Nine Realms after Bifrost have been, has been unoperational for a while. And thus we come to appreciate that Asgard is indeed sort of the world police, if you will, of the universe. And with a, an old enemy, the Dark Elves, returning, Asgard may not be able to defend the nine realms of the universe, and Thor will have to undertake a very dangerous mission and form an uneasy alliance with Loki in order to actually prevent the Dark Elves from returning the world to darkness as it was when they first existed. This one does a lot of things right and in a lot of ways improves upon the first. The few things, excuse me, where it isn't as good as the first is that the villain has very simple motivation. The there's less character development in favor of more action, and thankfully there's also more varied action. And the love, the, the romance is not that compelling this time around. But other than that, this one does pretty much everything else right. It's a very fast-paced, dynamic movie. There's a lot of humor, and it's the Terminator 2 kind of humor, where it just takes the edge off this very... This, this subject that could really lie heavily on the movie if you didn't just, yeah, take that edge off. And it does it so often that you would think that the seriousness would completely disappear from the movie, but it balances it extremely well that you're laughing a lot of the time, but you're never you never stop caring about the drama or the conflict. This one, rather than introduce a lot of new characters and situations, very smartly focuses on and follows up on the conflicts already set up. We have Thor and Loki going head-to-head -head over the conflict that's been brewing since Thor 1 and over the course of the Avengers as well. We have more screen time for both Odin and Frigga. And a lot of the film just chooses to focus more specifically on certain characters so that we can delve more into them and not be distracted by a wealth of characters. And at the same time, it does a better job of establishing this is a that Asgard is a vast world with many, many gods in it. The world of Asgard is also grittier and darker, and there are a... where Branos was quite shiny, which worked for the first movie, and there is... there are a number of details with that fit with sort of Viking culture and Norse mythology, it's, yeah, it's, it's a genuinely exciting film that, outside of this kind of forgettable villain, it's mostly the villain motivation that really disappoints. Outside of that, it, yeah, it's, it's highly enjoyable, it, it holds up quite well, and do not leave the theater before the screen is completely blank. Trust me. If you like this review and one more detailed one, the link will be in the description box. I've reviewed other parts of the series, the links are in the description box. 
please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.